Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sarah, and this is where we chat about all things EDC and my concealed carry journey. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I put out new videos every week, and I never want you to miss one. This week's video is something that I get questions on pretty much on a daily basis, and that is, I just got my new concealed carry permit, and what do I do now? And there's kind of a bit to unpack there, so let's dive right in. Also, check out the new Vortex shirt. Can you see that? Hopefully it doesn't go out of focus, but uh, that's my red dot on my AR, and I am kind of obsessed with like their logo and stuff, so I had to get one. First things first, regardless of if you have your first firearm or not, the one thing I want you to do is sign up for a handgun or pistol 101 course. Somewhere, wherever you can get in, go ahead and do that. Most ranges or instructors will require you to complete a pistol or handgun 101 course before you can move on to any other type of training. This class will walk you through what a pistol is, how it works, and uh, the proper techniques for shooting, and you will probably have some in-range time as well. And you will most likely be able to try out that firearm that you've had your eye on and ask questions to the instructors. And please, for the love of God, <laughs> Ask those questions. I know it can be intimidating, but that's what they're there for. And if you leave without asking that question, you it's going to bug you for like the rest of the day or your life or whatever. Please ask that question. It is what they're there for. They will answer it to the best of their ability and uh, most likely provide you with adequate information. The reason that I say this is the first thing that I want you to do is because wait lists for courses right now is like stupid long. I'm talking like months in advance. So the quicker you can get your name on that wait list, the better. And then while you're waiting, pop into the range and do some uh, range time on your own. You can also pop around on YouTube and Instagram and watch some educational and instructional videos. I will link down below a couple of different ones that I enjoy watching, but keep in mind that online training has nothing on real life in-person range time. The next thing, and probably my favorite thing, is the holster. So, before we even get into the holster, you're gonna wanna figure out where is comfortable for you to carry. There's a couple of different positions. There is 12 o'clock appendix, strong side or small of back, this is kind of strong side right here, or small of back or six o'clock carry. I personally do not recommend small of back or six o'clock carry for a couple of different reasons. One being, and the most important, is it's not safe. To me, that area is very sensitive, one, and uh, there has been some research and some complaints about people who carry small of back will start to notice they have some um, back problems later on in life and with that pressure of the um, handgun like kind of sitting on your spine it's very uncomfortable and will cause some issues over time the second thing is is if you were to be pushed or to fall because I'm super clumsy I fall all the time so if I were to fall on my back or on my butt or on my tailbone or something like that in that grip or slide jams into my spine it can cause some serious medical issues and that right there alone is a no-go for me. Another reason is is we are more likely to get attacked from behind and um, if I can't access my firearm or if for some reason I am printing really bad and someone sees it or like my shirt gets like tucked up over the grip or whatever and somebody grabs it then I am left completely vulnerable. So for me six o'clock or small of back carry is a no-go. My favorite type of uh, carry and what's most comfortable for me is appendix, which is right here. It is right between 12 o'clock and strong side carry. So somewhere right in this little groove between your hip and the like complete center of your body. There's like usually a little groove right here that it sits in nicely. I know that that position is not suitable for everyone and everyone's body type is different, but for me that is where I have the most accurate and efficient draw and where I can conceal comfortably and efficiently. Whatever position that you do decide to carry in, please practice with it as much as you possibly can to keep that muscle memory fresh. Before we can jump onto the holster, you're going to have to decide what firearm suits you. This question is almost impossible for me to answer because it is an incredibly personal choice. I know that this is like something that is said over and over and over again, but it is honestly the truth. The best firearm that you can choose is one that you are comfortable with, one that you can control, and one that you can conceal properly. It is also one that fits your hands and your lifestyle the best. I can tell you all day long what firearm I think you should choose, but 
in the end, if you're not comfortable with it, you're not going to train with it. So then it's just kind of a moot point. I highly recommend getting as many firearms in your hands before you make your purchase as possible. So go to the range and rent them if you can. I know a lot of ranges allow you to rent them. I rent a new one every, um, every couple times I go just to try them out or going and spending an hour or two in the local gun store and putting as many firearms in your hands as possible um, before you make that big purchase. Because once you make that purchase, if you don't like it, you're not gonna train with it and you're gonna have to go and buy another one. And trust me, I did that. So the only suggestion that I can truly make to you is getting a striker fired nine millimeter handgun. And that means that there is no hammer on it and it shoots nine millimeter caliber bullets. This would be the easiest to train on and it has more stopping power than a 22 caliber bullet. If you do need a jumping off point, some of the most popular and favorite firearms for concealed carry are mine, which is a Glock 43, or the Glock 43X, which has a longer grip than the 43 for bigger hands, or my husband's, which is a Glock 48, which has a longer barrel and a longer grip. Or the SIG P365 or 365XL, or the MMP Shield or Shield Plus, or the Springfield Hellcat, or the Springfield XDS. But again, each one of these has a ton of different characteristics to consider before making your purchase, like grip texture and grip size, slide comfortability, trigger pull, external safeties, um, and, and much more. So please put them all in your hands, feel which one works best for you. I would not personally worry about this snappiness or the recoil that's definitely something that you can work through with proper training I would look more for what fits comfortably in your hands and what you feel like you could carry and conceal with properly once you decide what firearm works for you then we will go on to your holster this is probably my favorite thing if you've been here a while you do know that I love to review holsters so I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest for any new concealed carry holder to put their focus on getting a good Kydex in waistband holster with adequate retention. My all time favorite holster and my daily go to is this one, which is from Eclipse Holsters. This is the Intrepid holster with the Delta wing and I subbed out the Ulti clip for the discrete carry monoblock. I will link this all down below just so that you have like a readout of what this is specifically. While Eclipse Holsters is my all time favorite company to purchase holsters from, I will link a couple more down below for you to look at. But a Kydex holster will be the easiest and the safest for you to train with. While I understand that belly bands and bra holsters and garter rigs can be easier or possibly easier to conceal with in certain outfits, most of them do not provide adequate trigger protection and can make training really unsafe and a lot harder than it needs to be. I personally would rather change my outfits than opt for carrying an unsafe holster with a chambered firearm. And last but certainly not least is your gun belts. So if you've been around my channel for any amount of time or my social media, then you know that I am a huge, huge fan of Core Essentials belts. I will show you the difference between a regular belt and a Core Essentials belt. This belt is just a typical one that you would buy from the store, but as you can see, it is very floppy, very flimsy, and it bends and moves around a lot. If we were to add the weight of a one and a half pound to two pound firearm, it flops around. And if I were to take my pants off in the restroom and have a belt like this on, there's potential for it to flop over. Luckily, we have a holster with really good retention, so it would not fall out. But regardless, you should invest in a belt that is meant to hold the weight of a firearm. I have two Core Essentials belts. I have one in Buffalo leather and then one in Black Tactical. I will link these both down below so you can get the exact ones. And those are the two belt buckles that I have on each one. I'm going to go ahead and put the holster on my buffalo leather one and you will notice that I it does not bend, it doesn't flop around, it doesn't wiggle, there's no movement at all. So I'm going to take this off really quick. As you can see, I cannot bend this or anything. The structure of this is super substantial and that will not only help with your draw um, it will make for a really smooth draw the holster won't move around it won't pull out while you're drawing but the ratchet capabilities 
of these belts will allow you to loosen and tighten your belt um, a, a lot more than a normal belt buckle will let you do. Uh, you have all of this room back here to tighten that belt down, which will help immensely with your concealment ability, and it really helps push that grip into your body if you have the delta wing. So with that, the biggest areas that you need to focus on when you first get your concealed carry permit is to get yourself into as much training as you possibly can, get yourself a firearm that works for you and is comfortable for you, find yourself a holster that is uh, hard kydex and has really good retention, and find yourself a really good gun belt. Again, I have linked everything down below for you guys. There are some coupon codes for probably... I think everything that I have mentioned um, thus far. So please take a look at those companies. I absolutely love them. And if you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. It would help me out immensely. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Stay safe out there. Bye guys.